Hi everyone, my name is Haley and I will be teaching you about breastfeeding. So you're probably watching this video because you are pregnant um, or you just gave birth or you are a healthcare provider um, looking for some knowledge to pass on to your um, breastfeeding patients or you're a support person for a breastfeeding person. So to begin, I just wanna tell you about the process of lactation. So lactation starts with lactogenesis one, which begins in your second trimester. It is um, centered on hormone stimulation. So that's when oxytocin and prolactin first get going. And then lactogenesis two occurs when you are, once you have given birth and expelled the placenta. Once the placenta has been expelled, then uh, lactogenesis two begins and Again, it is stimulated by hormones, oxytocin and prolactin. So some of you moms who have already given birth, you might notice that you experience some cramping when you're breastfeeding. And that is because oxytocin is working hard to um, stimulate and contract your uterus back to normal, um, which is also responsible um, for breastfeeding. <laughs> Uh, lactogenesis 3 occurs once breastfeeding has been established and is no longer reliant on solely the hormones. Um, lactogenesis 3 will be when you, your milk production relies on you expelling the milk. So once you have actually expressed milk, then milk production replenishes again. So if your intention is not to breastfeed, you would not be expressing any milk and that way lactogenesis 3 would never occur. Now breastfeeding is not always easy however having some knowledge um, including cue based feeding, um, different breastfeeding posi positions, signs of an effective latch um, and hand expression can put you on a good path towards successful breastfeeding. So when you first give birth, it is ideal that your baby is placed skin to skin for at least one hour, but ideally up to two hours. During this time, your infant may actually latch on on their own, or you might have some assistance from your nurse or midwife to help you to get the baby to latch during this time. Um, when initiating breastfeeding, it is important to breastfeed according to cues. So early cues that you may notice are your newborn is putting their hands to their mouth. Um, they're turning their head from side to side, kind of looking for your breast. They're sucking on their hands or just suckling. Um, and then a late cue would be that your baby is crying. And if you got into that point, where your baby is crying because they're hungry, then you will need to work on calming them down before you latch them on the breast. So most newborns, they need to feed as often as every two to three hours with a minimum of eight feedings per 24 hours. Some newborns may need to feed more because of jaundice and other neonatal conditions. So first off, using our props, I'm gonna show you a proper latch. So the latch is very important for breastfeeding. A good latch will ensure that your newborn is feeding effectively and that you do not experience discomfort. So the baby's head should be, <laughs> should be tilted slightly back with the nose pointed up in a sniffing position. And the mouth should be wide open. So you'll notice the mouth is wide open on our baby here. And the tongue is down as well as the lips are flanged. Now, when you bring them, once you're in a comfortable position and you bring them to the breast, what you're going to do is you're going to bring your baby to the breast. You are not going to bring your breast to the baby. You can support your breast with one hand. And then once your baby has the signs of a, of, of a good latch, like with the lips flanged, mouth wide open, um, head tilted and nose in the sniffing position, then you can bring your baby to your nipple and latch. Ideally, they should have your entire nipple as well as some of your areola 
um, and then you should feel rhythmic sucking as well as you should hear swallows. So after ensuring that you have a good latch, um, then you'll be on track for successful breastfeeding and you should keep the baby at the breast for ideally as long as they'd like. Um, but after about 15 minutes or so, you can offer the other breast um, just to keep them as even as you can. <laughs> um, and then another thing while latching is you want to be sure if you're supporting the breast with your other hand, make sure that your fingers are away from the nipple, okay? A lot of times people have their fingers too close to the nipple and it gets in the way of the latch and then the baby ends up having a shallow latch which results in blisters um, or sore nipples in general. So next we'll talk about feeding positions. So feeding positions vary uh, from person to person. Really it should be a, based on what is most comfortable for you. So if you had a C-section, you might find some positions are easier than others. Um, where, and say you have large breasts, you might find um, some positions are better than others. So first I just wanna tell you about the side lying position. Uh, a lot of patients who have C-sections find that this side lying position is the most comfortable for them. So ideally you want to be lying on your side with a pillow under your head and you will support your baby on their side while facing you. So let's pretend that I'm horizontal, although I am vertical. So the baby should be tummy to tummy with me. Okay. And I'll be supporting the baby here, but the bed is behind me. <laughs> okay. So this would be your side lying position. So this does not um, put baby up on your cesarean section scar. And that's why a lot of people find that to be comfortable as well as a lot of people need rest in general <laughs> after birth. So this is your most ideal position if you wanna be laying flat in bed. Now, when you bring the baby over, again, you wanna wait for their head to be in the um, tilted back, nose up, sniffing position, and then you'll latch them. You can always support your breast with one hand. And again, make sure that your fingers are away from the nipple. For support persons, you might be um, supporting somebody by bringing them pillows, helping them get into position, or even bringing them the baby after they have gotten into this position. Next, we'll talk about the football hold. So the football hold is exactly what it sounds like, as if you're holding a football, okay? This um, position usually works well for women with large breasts. So with one hand behind the back and supporting the shoulders and the neck, like this, okay? You're gonna tuck the baby in over here. You might use a pillow under you to support, and then you can support your other breast Support your breast with your other hand, okay? And then once you're ready and your baby, um, your baby's mouth is wide open and the lips are flanged and the tongue is down, then you'll bring the baby to the breast, like so, okay? You bring the baby. You're not going to be bending over. You bring the baby, okay? And again, any support persons, they might need to assist you in getting comfortable in this position finding out what works best for you, whether it's a lot of pillows, no pillows, and so on. The next position is the cross cradle position, which is probably one of the best positions for new moms, but it can be uncomfortable as well because it's just an, a new position for your arms and wrist, and you might experience some discomfort at first, but I'll tell you what you can do in the meantime. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold the shoulders and neck from behind, supporting the baby, okay? And then you're going to bring them to the opposite breast. So the baby is supported on the neck and shoulders, not the head, okay? The neck and shoulders, and you'll bring them across to the breast with you supporting and then you latch when the baby's lips are flanged, mouth is wide open, and so on. 
Okay, so your arm is across their body. Now, the cross cradle position is great for newborn babies because they don't have um, the, the neck strength that they need to be able to latch on their own. So this is a good way to have a really good hold on them so that you're able to achieve that good latch. Okay, and then once you're comfortable in this position and the baby is sucking rhythmically and has a good latch, then you could sweep this arm under and get comfortable. And now you're in the cradle position. Okay, so the cradle position is where you would hold the baby with this arm, with, with their head supported by your elbow here. And then you always wanna make sure that their body is aligned with yours and their tummy is to your tummy. So you don't want to have your baby's tummy up in the air and your baby's head turned, okay? Make sure that it's completely aligned and that when you pr bring them in, they're tummy to tummy and then you latch them. This tends to work for um, older babies, toddlers and so on, um, because you don't have to use that wrist to get them into position. Now, ultimately with different feeding positions, your main goal is to be comfortable. You want to do what works for you and what works for your baby, but we don't want you to have to be um, trying every position and it not working and so on. You need to do what's comfortable for you, okay? Next, we will talk about hand expression. So ideally after every feed, you should hand express. So I'm gonna put our baby aside. Hand expression is exactly what it sounds like. You are expressing breast milk from your breast by hand. Okay, this does not, you do not need a pump to do this. After every feed, especially in the first few days, it's ideal for you to do some hand expression to help stimulate breast milk production. You can do it, um, to save extra colostrum for later, or if your baby needs um, top-ups after their feedings, you can give them the colostrum that you express um, through hand expression to them on the spot by spoon or by cup. Um, another thing that hand expression is great for is if you have sore nipples, you can express colostrum directly onto the nipple, and that should help with the tenderness that you might be experiencing. So to hand express, you'll make a C shape with your hand. And then with your, <laughs> we're gonna go like this way. So then you'll place it on your breast, okay? You don't wanna be too close to the nipple. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull back, compress, relax. Pull back, compress, relax. Pull back, compress, relax. And you're going to do this over and over again um, and you'll start seeing colostrum coming out. If you don't see anything at first, that's okay. You might just need to adjust your hand, hand placement so that you are closer to the nipple or, or further back. Now that you know all this information about breastfeeding, you should be on track for successful breastfeeding. If you're having any trouble, please do not hesitate to ask a nurse or a midwife or any healthcare provider that can assist you. Support persons can also assist you. Like I said, with positioning, they may need to bring you some more pillows. Um, they can bring you water because hydration is key at this time. Um, and if when leaving the hospital, you need additional support, you can ask your nurse or lactation consultant for community resources that you may need.